Let's take a look at how to install the plugins. So the easiest way is if the developer has created a little file called an SDL plugin file like these two here. And I'm going to show you how these work. All you need to do is download them. And you, if, you, if they are an SDL plugin file, you don't even need to save them to your desktop. You can just run them immediately. They download and opened. But if you've got them on your desktop, you can double click it like this. And it brings up a little window, this one, which is the plugin installer wizard. Now this is installed by default with Studio 2015 SP2 and onwards. If you have an earlier version of Studio, then you need to download the plugin installer wizard from the SDL app store which is here, like that. So go to the App Store and just do a search for the SDL plugin installer and you can download that and install it. This will work for all versions of Studio, even the most recent version, but if you've got 2015 SP2 and above, you don't need to go and get this. So that's the first thing. In terms of how to use it, let me just show you there's also a little article which you might find useful, which is here, called Managing Your Plugins, uh, which I wrote on my blog. And this is all about how to use the plugin installer, what it looks like, different issues and things like that in terms of how to install the plugins. That's worth a read as well. But anyway, let's come back to the plugin installer. So once you've run it, oh, I should show you one other thing. Let me just show you one other thing. If you've installed Studio 2015 SP2, SR2 or above, then you'll actually find that the plugin management application, it might not say 005 because I've customized this, but you'll find the SDL plugin management is installed already and you can get access to it in the project view here. And if you click on that, that will also open up the management tool like that. But we'll come back to the management tool in a minute. So let me close Studio for the time being. So we'll come back to installing. So you've downloaded your plugin file. You double click it. You click on next. You agree to the terms and conditions. Read them if, you've, if, you've, if you feel the need. Um, and then you'll find that it will list every version of Studio that you have installed on your machine. If they're grayed out, it's because the plugin has not been written for the other version. So here I've deliberately tried to run a plugin that was designed only for Studio 2011. Sometimes the developers don't do this properly and they don't set the plugin to work for a particular version. And you might find um, that a plugin you've had from somebody, especially an unsigned one that we haven't had time to check, is actually available for all three when it's only suitable for one of them. That very rarely happens, but I have seen it. But the idea is, is that each version of Studio the plugin should be specifically designed to suit the versions you have installed. In this case, this plugin is only for 2011. So I would then click on the next. Oh, I would need to tick it first. So if you forget to tick it, it tells you to tick it. I tick it, click on next. And then it says the SDL plugin install has finished. Thank you for using it. That means it's installed. And you click on OK. And that plugin is now installed. If I open up the plugin manager, so for example, I've also got a quick link to it here. And I go to Studio 2011, you can see I've now got the My Memory plugin installed. And if I want to uninstall it, which you can only do when Studio is not running, you just click on Uninstall and it's gone. You'll also see this little message here, there are installed plugins requiring administrator rights. And I'll come on to that in a second. So let's come down and look at another one. I have one here from Term Terminotics. This one has been designed for 2014 and 2015. If I double click that one and click on next, agree, next, you can see this time 2014 and 2015 are available to me. I can install them both or I can just install one of them, whatever I prefer. Click on next, click on OK, and that's done. Go back to the manager, look at 2014, and there's the Terminotics plugin and I could uninstall that if I don't want it. So that's how that works. Now let's just take a look at these admin rights. Now there are some applications, and these will always be applications that have been installed using an EXE file or an MSI file rather than the SDL plugin. The SDL plugin files will never need 
or if you've installed them via the SDL plugin file, they'll never need this and you won't see that message. But if you've installed one that does require admin rights, then you need to run the plugin manager with admin rights in order to see it and in order to remove it. So for example, I know that in 2015, if I scroll down the bottom here, I have installed AppSec Xbench into Studio, but it's not listed down here. It normally appears at the end of this list down here. So what I need to do is close it and run that as admin rights. Now I can do that from my little Total Commander tool here by right clicking on the same icon and I can run it as administrator. So you need to find the link in Windows to the plugin manager and run it as an administrator. And when you do that this time, the little red message is gone. And when I scroll down here, you can now see I've got the AppSec Xbench um, plugin. And now I could remove it from here if I wanted to. So I can click on uninstall and it's gone. But I wouldn't be able to do that unless I run it as, administra as an administrator. And this is because that particular plugin just required admin rights in order to be able to get at it. So it's as simple as that really. I hope that explains a little bit how to use them. Or maybe I'll just show you one other thing. Um, most of the apps are installed into this location. If I just come down to here, I'll give you an idea. App data roaming, for example. So in this location here, and it will be a different number. So for 2014, it would be Studio 11. For, two, for 2011, it will be Studio 10. And for 2009, it would be Studio... Let me just go back and see. There we go. 12 is 2015, 11 is 2014, 10 is 2011. And I don't have 2009 installed on this machine at all. But the plugins are actually installed into this packages folder here. So if you do have problems trying to install the plugins, you can copy the plugin manually into this folder. And if you do that, when you start it up, it will expand the plugin into the unpacked folder here down here. So the other way to remove a plugin, plugin, if you don't actually want to have a plugin in here, what can I take out that I don't particularly want? Let's take out the number verifier, I can put it back in. So I want to take out the number verifier. I can delete from this manually. That's now unpacked. Deleting this won't do any harm because if I restart Studio, it will be unpacked again. But if I then go into the packages and remove the number verifier from here, let me just copy it over here for a second so I can get back at it easy enough. If I delete it from there, now when I start up Studio, it's completely gone. So doing those two operations manually is exactly the same as removing them with the, pack -in, with the plugin manager. But obviously the plugin manager is just much easier. Um, and to put it back again, I can double click number verifier. Next, next, it's a 2015 only that one, click next, okay, and you can see now it's put it back in there. I don't think it's unpacked yet, but it will be packed as soon as I start Studio up. So if I start Studio, let's just try and keep an eye on this folder down here. You can see all of them in there, so it should get slightly bigger, this folder, as soon as Studio is finished starting up. If I go back to here. You can see it's already got bigger and the number verifier is now back unpacked and it's available to me in studio and if i come over here and go file options where is the number verifier it's in my verification there it is number verifier so it's as simple as that so managing the plugins is really quite a straightforward affair and um, there are ways to deal with it if there are problems but i hope that gives you a reasonably comprehensive overview of how to manage the plugins in Studio. If you need any other information, I'd recommend you go and take a look at the article I showed you earlier on. Thank you.